Enzymes are great. They greatly speed up reactions and they don't get used up in the process. Not so great is trying to figure out exactly how they're doing it, or at least trying to wrap your head around kinetics. So kinetics deals with how fast enzymes work. And these thing, kinetic schemes can get really, really complicated because you can be dealing with lots of different substrates and they can be there's all these different steps and they're converted and all these things. And so we often simplify things by thinking in terms of michaelis menten kinetics. With this simple, well, relatively simple, michaelis menten kinetics where we make a number of assumptions and we do measurements under very specific conditions, we can do things like measure the initial rate of an enzyme's function at a variety of substrate concentrations, and then take that data to get a michaelis menten curve and this curve is basically your substrate concentration versus the amount of product formed. And you can use that curve to figure out what we call the michaelis menten constants. And so we have our Km, which is the concentration of the substrate that gets you to half of the maximum velocity. The lower the Km, the kind of higher the affinity, but it's not just affinity. We'll talk a little bit about those complications. And then you have your Kcat, which is your turnover rate. You're actually converting the substrate into product. And this is going to correspond to the um, to the Vmax, so your maximum velocity, divided by your enzyme concentration. We also have this term called the specificity constant, or sometimes called the catalytic efficiency, but that term is a bit misleading because it's not really good for comparing enzymes to one another, but it is okay for comparing an enzyme to different substrates. We also can talk about activity and specific activity and the differences between these terms. And so I'll talk a little bit about each of these terms, as well as some other kind of assumptions we make with michaelis menten kinetics and some of the key, key takeaways to make. One of the key takeaways though, is that enzymes are typically not following michaelis menten kinetics, at least not fully, although it makes a nice approximation. And for a lot of enzymes, it can get you really far. So let's dive in. So we have a situation where the enzyme finds a substrate. You get this enzyme substrate complex. Now the enzyme is going to transform that into an enzyme product complex because basically it takes it, makes a product, it's holding on to that product, and it lets the product go. Now, when we do talking about Michaelis Menten kinetics, we make some simplifications. We say we're going to basically ignore the fact that the product could theoretically return to be a substrate. We're going to say we're not going to have enough, we're going starting the very beginning, we're measuring velocity at the very beginning, there's not going to be enough product to even like go backwards, we're going to consider that there's also not going to be a product to bind, so it's going to like, the release is not going to be really rate limiting, the product isn't going to do something weird like inhibit, we're talking simplifications, so we take an enzyme, we give it as much substrate as it needs, and we measure its velocity, that's how we're going to be doing these Michaelis menten kinetics, and that's how we're going to figure out kind of how good the enzyme is. So we're going to simplify things. We ignore that enzyme product complex. We ignore the fact that it's reversible to go to the from the ES to the EP. And we consider that the rate limiting step is going to be this KCAT. It's going to be the kind of, we're going to combine the enzyme to product and the, enzyme, the product release in this one thing. And this is all kind of going to be encompassed by our KCAT. So if we think about this, kind of just lumping them together and calling it the K-cat. So the K-cat is going to be our turnover where we're going from the enzyme substrate to the enzyme in the release product. So again, it's a simplification, but we can make this simplification for a couple reasons. One is that we do these measurements of velocity in the very beginning, or not the very, very beginning, once the enzyme like has enough time to find things, but then we have this condition where the enzyme can be working and the product is not going, there's not going to be enough product that it could like go backwards. So the product isn't going to like, the enzyme can't find product to bind. And then if it can't find product to bind, it can't reverse the bot product binding. Um, and we're going to consider that's not going to really reverse the product binding otherwise, or the product formation otherwise. So we're going to simplify that all. Now we can consider that our rate limiting step is going to be this turnover. And so this is going to be our KCAT. So we take these enzymes. We give an enzyme as much substrate as it wants, a single enzyme, as fast as it can go, that's going to be the KCAT. This is going to be for a single copy of that enzyme, basically. The more of those enzymes you have, the more total product is going to be formed. 
And so that's why you get your V max. The V max is just going to be your K cat times the enzyme concentration. Similarly, your K cat is going to be the V max divided by the enzyme concentration. Now, how much velocity you end up getting, like how much product you're forming, is going to depend on a couple things. It's going to depend on how well you can bind the substrate. So like how quick can you pack it up and how tightly can you hold it? And then how well can you actually convert that substrate to a product? So remember, if we're talking about kind of like the, the binding, that's going to be our KM. So remember that the KM is kind of similar to our KD, but it's not quite so simple. And so the KM isn't exactly um, like a measurement of affinity, but we can use it to kind of like approximate affinity. And it's a better measurement of affinity than, say, our K-cat. And so our K-cat is going to be looking at kind of the product turnover, so the actual turning over, so converting that substrate into products. The velocity that we're going to see is going to depend on those rate constants. But then those rate constants, well, that's what we talk about with our, with our, like our K-cat. So our K-cat is a rate constant, whereas the velocity is going to be a rate. So rate versus rate constant, it's really important to keep those that distinction in mind. If we want to think about kind of like how good an enzyme is for a substrate, we need to consider both the KM and the KCAT. We have a value that does this, and this is called the specificity constant. It's sometimes called the catalytic efficiency, and it's the KCAT over the KM. So why do we call it the catalytic efficiency? Well, think about your car. If you want an efficient car, it's going to be able to go a long way and a little bit of get with a little bit of gas and not have much waste left over. Similarly, we want our enzyme to be able to make a little product in without having to have extra waste and we want it to do it fast and all this great stuff. So we want to take into account the KCAT and the KM. So remember that if our KM is higher, what that's meaning, that's like weaker binding. And if our KCAT is higher, well, that's like better turnover. So if we look at the specificity constant, we have the KCAT over the KM. So if we have weak binding, we're going to have a big KM, and that's going to make our specificity constant lower. Whereas if we had tight binding, KM would be smaller, and that would make our specificity constant bigger. What about our KCAT? Well, if we're better at turning things over, our KCAT's going to be bigger. If our KCAT's bigger, since it's on the top, our specificity constant is going to be bigger as well. So we can use this term KCAT over KM. And it's really good if you are trying to um, analyze the same enzyme with different substrates, but it's not so good if you're trying to like compare different enzymes. So it can be a bit misleading in that regard. And I'm not gonna um, like make you go into why or anything like that. Um, just know that the specificity constant can be used to kind of compare an enzyme with how good it is for one substrate versus how good it is for another substrate. So say it likes one substrate better than the other because it binds one substrate better than the other. Well, what would happen was the one it bound tighter would have a, low, would have a lower KM. If the KM was lower, the specificity constant would get higher. If an enzyme was better with this one substrate because it could turn it over faster, well, then what would happen is your K-cap for that substrate would be bigger and therefore your specificity constant for that substrate would be bigger. Michaelis mention equation is coming down to these rate constants. You have your K-cat, your K-on, your K-off. And the rate constants, remember, these are going to be different from your rate. So the rate, this is going to come from those rate constants and the concentration. Similarly to how when we talked about like thermodynamics of binding, of equilibrium binding thermodynamics and stuff, and we we're talking about like KD, and we talked about how we had those rate constants, our K-on and our K-off. But the actual rate of your binding is going to depend on the concentration. So you have to multiply that by your concentrations. Similarly, so we have those key terms, our KCAT and our KN. Our KCAT, that's our turnover number, is telling you about like how fast the enzyme is like converting that substrate into product. Remember, we make those simplifications where we're not going to consider that the product is going backwards or anything like this. Um, and that we have that like whole steady state thing. So remember the steady state assumption that's kind of like when we talk about equilibrium thermodynamics and we say that we get to this point where the rate of the binding is equal to the rate of the unbinding, not the rate constants, but the rates. Similarly, when we talk about the steady state assumption with the michaelis mendon equation, we're saying that the rate of substrate binding the enzyme is the same as the rate it either unbinds or gets converted into products. 
And we make these conditions where the steady state assumption is fairly reasonable, where we're measuring in the early beginning. We've got plenty of substrate. We don't have um, product forming, like we don't have enough product building up that makes things go backwards or causes weird things. So we can make the steady state assumption that the substrate binding to the enzyme happens at the same rate. It either binds, uh, it either unbinds or gets converted into product. And remember rate, not rate constants. The KCAT, this is like how fast one copy of the enzyme is working. You typically don't have one copy of the enzyme. You've got lots of copies of the enzyme. And so when you're in the lab and you're measuring your enzyme, instead of measuring like that single enzyme and how fast it's working, you're going to be measuring this like the velocity of how much all the enzymes in the mixture are working. That's going to give you your velocity. And if you vary the substrate concentration so that you get to that point where the con where the enzyme has is not limited by substrate. So it has as much substrate as it needs. So every enzyme can get as much as it wants. You're going to reach your maximum velocity or V max. The con substrate concentration that it takes to do this is your Km. The more substrate you need in order to reach that, the weaker the affinity. Basically, it's saying that although there's a lot of sticks around, you don't really want to grab that much or them that much, or if you grab them, you let go pretty quick. And so you're going to need to keep running into those sticks um, and kind of have them forced down your throat or forced into your hands and kept there in order for you to do things. And so your KM is going to be higher if you have weaker binding. But if you're up tighter binding, you're basically, even if there aren't that many sticks around, you're snapping them up. And so your KM is going to be lower. This is just like we said all with our KV in terms of directionality, but there's an extra complication with our KM because you also have that. It is influenced by that, that um, turnover to product. So the KM is not independent and it's not just about affinity, but we consider it a measurement of affinity as a simplification. Remember that when we're looking at one of these plots, plots what we're looking at here is you're looking at substrate concentration versus product formation. You're looking at a Vmax graph not looking at one of those time graphs. So when you're looking at a time graph, what's going to happen here is that you have a single substrate concentration and here your plateau is going to be where you, your plateau is when you, when you run out of your substrate. Whereas in the, this kind of graph, you're kind of running out of enzyme and the fact that all your enzyme is kind of being used up. And that is going to be your plateau in one of these metallus menting graphs. And in the, when you have one of these single graphs, this is like time, michaelis menten graph, your x-axis is your substrate concentration. Note that Km is coming from this michaelis menten graph, and it does not depend on the substrate concentration. It's kind of like the substrate concentration at which you have something happens, at which you have that half maximal velocity. Because how much those individual enzymes like to bind the substrate is not going to depend on how much substrate there is around. So the Km is not going to depend on the substrate concentration. And the Kcat isn't going to depend on the substrate concentration. How much of the substrate you have is not going to influence how quickly an enzyme can convert that substrate to product. The only thing that is going to depend on your substrate concentration is going to be your velocity. And so that's why you can measure the velocity at a bunch of different substrate concentrations. And this is going to give, let you find your um, michaelis menten constants. And note that here, what you're seeing too, is that you want to measure the velocity at this very beginning point, or not, not this kind of like burst state where things are trying to just find each other, but in this steady state part. And basically steady state, where you have the enzymes doing that grab break, grab break, grab break without having to worry about, without having to worry about running out. And then you enter that post steady state where you start to run out. And so we don't want to measure here. We want to measure right here in this linear range. An important thing too is that because this we're in the steady state zone, remember we're saying that the rate of binding is equal to the rate of either dropping it or converting it to product. So it's not always just going to grab and convert to product. Sometimes it's going to drop it. And basically, the lower the affinity, the more frequently it's going to be dropping it. And so this is why you can have, you'll have these different velocities at this different substrate concentration because the enzyme has to both, has to bind it efficiently, effectively. It has to have this like productive binding or in order to convert it to a product.
So in all these cases, because you're at the very beginning, there's enough substrate that the enzyme isn't going to run out until like later when the zone where it's not going to run out of the substrate. But the lower the substrate concentration is, the harder it is for it to be able to like um, get enough of that productive binding to have a higher activity. So remember, you're thinking about kind of like productive binding. We've got to bind and convert. And what we're measuring here in this linear range is going to be our V naught or the, your V zero. Sometimes you see it um, called the V zero, but it's um, the V naught. And then you plot all those V naughts. And then the point at which you're at the half max is going to be your Km. And if you take that, um, that maximum that where the point at which it plateaus and you divide that by your enzyme concentration, you're going to get your K-cat. And then if you divide your K-cat by your Km, that's your specificity constant or your catalytic efficiency. But remember, it's not really, that's a bit misleading because it's better to call it the specificity constant because it is telling you more about how, how good an enzyme is for one substrate than another versus how good one enzyme is compared to one another. A final note is that when we talk about enzymes, we often talk in terms of activity units. An activity unit is basically whatever people define it to be. And so it has to be it's like under these specific conditions, then like this buffer or whatever, this amount, this activity corresponds to like the conversion of one mole of blah, blah, blah to one mole of blah, blah, blah in blah, blah, blah minutes or something. And so you have this specific, this specific kind of thing that defines the unit, but it can be different. It will, it has to be different for different enzymes because different enzymes do the same, different things. So if you have a stick snap or a V, like it snaps, this much stick snapped in this many minutes. Whereas if you have a tile layer, it would be this many tiles laid in this many minutes. That is their activity. It's kind of like a measure of just like how much stuff gets done. So the more work that gets done, the more activity you can say it has. But what about like how many and how much enzyme it actually took to do that activity? Well, that gets to a term called your specific activity, where you divide the activity or by the amount of total protein. So basically you're dividing it by mixed protein. And what's going to happen now is that if you don't have a lot of, you don't need a lot of protein, you're going to have a really high specific activity, but if you need a lot of protein, you're going to have a really low specific activity. And well, why might you need, why might you have a lower versus a higher? Well, some of that comes down to how pure your enzyme is. So if you say had 20 workers come and they got the job done and you had, then you find out that only 10 of the, the workers were stick snappers, well, then the enzyme would be um, better than you kind of thought it was, but your purity was going to be lower. And so ultimately you're going to have that your specific activity is going to be lower because your solution is less pure. And so you're going to need kind of more workers to get the same amount of things done, even though most of those workers weren't actually your enzymes. So your specific activity could be lower because your thing is impure, or it could be lower because your enzyme is kind of worse. But if you're taking the same enzyme, it should have the sp same specific activity unless the enzymes have different purities. And so you can compare specific activity between like different enzyme preps or between a wild type and a mutant and things like this um, in order to compare activities. But you don't want to compare just the activity. You want to compare the specific activity because the activity is going to depend on the concentration of your enzyme. This is similar to how we saw that the velocity was going to depend on the enzyme concentration. 